show tonight. My first guest anchors the CBS Evening News and 48 Hours and contributes to 60 Minutes 2. He's also author of the brand new book, Deadlines and Datelines. It's just coming out. Please welcome our pal Dan Rather. <laughs> The kids of America just go crazy. <laughs> thank you very much for being here. Oh, thanks for having me. It's Connie. nice to finally have you on the show. I just met you seconds ago uh, when I barged into your dressing room. And I've written you an apology letter already. Oh, good. <laughs> yes, you were quite nude, yeah. Uh, <laughs> this has to be... This has to be very exciting for you, uh, meeting me, and uh, I was curious... Indeed it is. <laughs> yeah. You have met, in your line of work, uh, unlike mine, you meet, the, you meet everybody. I mean, we meet the celebrities, or sometimes we have a celebrity on the show and a lot of other people. And, uh, but you meet the big, big celebrities. Do you ever yourself get starstruck? Have you, who does Dan Rather meet and go, oh my God, I can't believe I just met this person? Well, uh, the current Pope uh, was one, mm -hmm. was absolutely awestruck. Bart Starr, who came over and said hello to me in a restaurant in Palm Springs once. I was, abs I was so sorry, so I got to start saying, I buy, I buy, I buy, I buy, sort of thing. That must have frightened him. Uh, <laughs> certainly frightened me. Did you do the news and, that way? Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure that I should admit this, but Kate Moss is somebody that uh, I can get pretty awestruck. See, that's about. where I go. Have it, have it, have it, have it, have it. <laughs> People just tuning in will think I'm coming on to you. Uh, <laughs> Listen, my age, I would be welcome. You know. uh, Oh, Dan, you're naughty. Uh, you have this book out, and the first thing I know, I always flip to the photograph that they have of the author whenever there's a book. You know, whenever a famous person writes a book, I always want to see the photograph. And I'm looking at yours, and what struck me about it is the photograph here is you're posing with a typewriter here. Well, there's a story there. Why don't you just pose with a turn-of-the-century bicycle? <laughs> <laughs> Do you actually use a typewriter? Does I anybody... used to. Here's the story on that. I, I, this is the sixth book I've been involved with, and four of the books I wrote on an old royal upright typewriter. You really did, before. write on an old typewriter? Absolutely. But, you know, I've become computer literate. When the publisher arranged for a photographer to take a picture, the photographer said, listen, for a news guy, you know, authenticity is everything. He loved the idea of the typewriter. I said, well, okay, if you want to take a picture of the typewriter, we do it. Took a look at a picture of the typewriter. When the picture got to the publisher, the publisher called me, slightly irritated, and said, Dan, we can't put a picture of a man with a typewriter on the front of a book in 1999. They it's were like, thinking, yeah, it's like you and the Unabomber are the only two people <laughs> still use a typewriter. And so that's very observant. <laughs> Did you, put a, did you put a press uh, card in the brim of your hat? No. I'm going to have a big story, I see? <laughs> i got a big one for you. Well done. Well, you were noting, the, the picture is not on the cover of the book, and the reason it's not on the cover of the book is because it's a typewriter. They talked about, well, maybe we could sort of put in a computer. Right. But that didn't work. Then maybe we could cover the typewriter. <laughs> but, you know, I used to carry a royal typewriter. I carried it for years in the pre-computer age. Uh, that I used to carry an old royal typewriter, and I stopped carrying it once. Uh, uh, this was fairly, I guess, in the early 1980s. I was on an airplane, had a radio piece to type, and so I pulled it out and started typing it. Some people in first class complained about the noise, but a woman from the rear of the aircraft brought her daughter up to see the typewriter and said, that's a typewriter. It's the first time the child had ever seen one. There used to be millions yeah. of those in the country. And then the you started making butter with a churn. <laughs> exactly. And I said, I that's it for me. I better, get, I better get computer literate. That's the last time I used it. I, um, you, you obviously are a very accomplished person, and I, and I don't mean to sound crazy, but I do notice people's hair. I have, I, that's my thing. And when guys have very cool hair, I'm always like, hey, cool hair. You, sir, have very cool hair. Thank you. Honey. Have you always had cool hair? Well, there we go. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate that. Well, you know, like everybody else in the, the 1950s, I, 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 I wore a pompadour and used to spend a lot of time working on the pompadour. It was a big thing at Sam Houston. You had a big uh, greaser uh, style haircut. Well, I wouldn't say greaser, but it was. Because uh, we actually, we found a photo. Can we take a look at this, please? This is a, look at that. <laughs> Not, that, not far off the mark. We had something called Rose Hair Oil. <laughs> You're about to sing Dunk of Shane. <laughs> <laughs> we had something called Rose Hair Oil, which everybody used for their pompadour. 
Really, and it's just—it's so funny because I think of you as—you know—you're delivering the news, and you don't. Do you know what I mean? I don't think of people like you as having like a crazy. Well, youth. I delivered the news to the Pompadour, but of course that was on radio. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you could get away with it. Many people say I should be on radio. Uh, you, um, you are from Texas. I'm not you're, only up uh, from Texas and of Texas. You are of Texas, and you go back. You just actually returned. I just got back uh, yesterday, as a matter of fact. And you may be interested. In, one of the things I love about Texas, so many things, but the colorful language people use. An elected politician, no, I'm not going to tell you who it was, I heard him say he was, and you have to admire him, he said, we don't do enough for the homely people. And I thought, well, this is a very good idea. He said, I passed coming into this meeting. They were under the bridges. They were on the street. The homely people are still with us. Uh, and he also said later on that, uh, that these homely people are entitled to some tranquility. <laughs> now, you have, to, you have to love that kind of language. George W. Bush, right? <laughs> Let me just guess. I'll leave it to you to guess. All right, we'll figure it out. Uh, Deadlines and Datelines is available now, so check that out. Uh, you know, you're one of those people that I, I wanted to meet, so thank you very much for, for you, coming Connor. by. Thanks for having me. Yeah, really, really good to have you. Good luck with the book. Thank you very Dan much. Dan Lather, everybody. Thank you. Trey Parker thank you. and Matt Stone are coming up. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. Thank you.